राइट सो हेलो गाय ओके सो आर टारगेट टुडे आर टारगेट टुडे राइट आई विल कम बैक टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई होप ऑल ऑफ योर प्रिपरेशन इज गोइंग रियली वेल राइट तो अभी वैसे प्रिपेयर होने का क्या है देर इज नथिंग टू प्रिपेयर राइट नाउ यू जस्ट हैव फोर डेज लेफ्ट ओके सो एट द एंड ऑफ द सेशन इफ यू आर रिवाइजिंग स्टॉप रिवाइजिंग इफ यू आर डूइंग ग्रांड टेस्ट स्टॉप डूइंग द ग्रांड टेस्ट आई विल टेल यू वॉट टू डू ओके डू ओनली दो थिंग्स do only one that thing in these four days and definitely i can guarantee you you will definitely reach 15 plus marks for sure 15 se kam to nahi aayega 15 plus for sure okay so at the end of the session i will be talking about that so we are uh, short of time right now so let us get started so our topic today will be 50 anatomy images which are highly highly anticipated so these are the images which were repeated in the previous exams okay so it is highly anticipated that these images i'm not telling all of them but some of these images might definitely come in your exam okay so let us get started guys so i'll be asking you the questions i'll be asking you the questions you keep on answering i'll keep on writing and going at the end we shall discuss the things okay so as you can see in the slide over here if you are all good to go then if you are all good to go i'll i'll talk about the anxiety everything at the end last 5 minutes is enough for me all of you are good to go shall i start everyone is right you ready yeah <coughs> right very good so what is the most common site of the fracture of the clavicle What is the most common site of the fracture of the clavicle? कौन बताएगा Yes, all of you are telling medial टू थर्ड lateral वन थर्ड वो wrong answer है Even in if you have done the question banks in the marrow and all also, they have been completely updated. So the most common, the most common site of the fracture, if you don't know, just write it down. That is medial थ्री fifth, medial थ्री fifth and lateral टू fifth. okay medial 3/5 and lateral 2/5 this is the most common site of the clavicular fracture ye cheez yaad rakho right the reason why i kept is most of you get confused over here this is the first point in anatomy which will be discussed clear all of you medial 3/5 lateral 2/5 ye yaad rakho not 2/3 1/3 ho gaya zamana in the latest edition of uh, uh, gray's anatomy right in the student edition 42 there it has been updated that medial Three fifth and lateral two fifth. Okay, right. Now just look at this. They will give you such picture. They will point at one point and ask you what are the structures. Let us start from easy to difficult tasks. Okay, the easiest part. Now, ye bato. What is this part number one? All of you know that is your acromion process. All of you know that is your acromion process. Okay, acromion process. Guys, I can understand. i can understand that you are all in a tensed phase that is the reason why again i am telling you if those who have joined new now at the end of the session i will tell you what to do in this four days blindly trust me okay this do these things because if you you can't study new things now you can't solve grand tests uh, completely now yes or no you can't revise the entire 19 subjects so what you can do i will tell you that thing okay so what is point number 2 this is your coracoid process very good coracoid process ab ye dekho in the options they will also give you coronoid process coronoid process nahi coracoid process okay coracoid process what is this one over here this is called as the inferior angle of scapula inferior angle of your scapula so these are the three important things just you need to remember Yeah, I don't think so. If they they might ask you this thing, but let us start from the basic part. अभी ये बताओ what is this condition? Anyone? Come on, be fast, guys. The session will be for one one and a half hour. We shall discuss the most top fifty images. I want you to completely actively just focus here. ये winging of scapula नहीं है. This is not winging of scapula. This condition is called as Sprengel deformity. Sprengel deformity. What is this condition called as? 
this condition is called as sprengel deformity what is sprengel deformity sprengel deformity ye hoga ki normally during the embryo during the developmental time right during the fetal development around 9 weeks kya hoga scapulas are normally formed in the neck region from the neck region during the 9th week the scapulas will start descending down one side the scapula has descended down in this patient but one side the scapula did not descend down okay you see yahan pe to scapula theek hai it has descended down but this scapula is present in the neck region only okay it is present in the neck region only so this condition is called as sprengel deformity or congenitally high scapula i will also tell you most of you are confusing most of you are confusing sir ye uh, <coughs> लॉन्ग थोरेसिक नर्व इंजरी जैसे दिख रहे राइट सो लेट मी क्लैरिफाई दिस थिंग इफ देर इज ए प्रॉब्लम विद लॉन्ग थोरेसिक नर्व इंजरी मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम द पिक्चर विल नॉट बी लाइक दिस राइट वेन यू आर डूइंग प्रोट्यूजन जब हाथ ऐसे सामने रखते हो वॉट विल हैपन टू दैपलस कैपलास आर प्रोट्यूडेड एट दैट टाइम यू कैन सी विंगिंग बट हियर आर दैंड कैप्ट इन अ फॉरवर्ड पोजिशन टेल मी इन ए पुशिंग सेंस इज इज इट प्रेजेंट इन ए पुशिंग सेंस स्क्रीन स्टक इन Am I visible, guys? Or did the screen, yeah? Did the screen here get stuck, or am I visible to all of you? It is normal, right? So always and always remember: if they will give you a picture in your exam where both the hands are kept forward and you have taken a photo from the back, one side it is down, one side it is up, that will be your winging of scapula. But here. normally you are seeing a winging right but normally when the hands are kept side to side like this right if you are seeing winging that is sprengel deformity ye yaad rakho that is sprengel deformity right so i hope you understood now difference between winging of scapula as well as the sprengel deformity right let us go on to the next thing look at this deformity tell me what is this congenital deformity called as in this congenital deformity what is happening is that both the clavicles are absent so either you can call it as aplastic clavicle aplastic clavicle or you can call it as hypoplastic clavicle aplastic or hypoplastic clavicle okay so this aplastic or hypoplastic clavicle is nothing but called as cleidocranial cleidocranial dysostosis right those students who have attended my live lectures on upper limb in this channel itself all of you might have known what is cleidocranial dysostosis right so if you see such picture then directly put up the option cleidocranial dysostosis okay right <coughs> i'm sorry now look at this now i'm telling you now i'm telling you from nerve injuries from nerve injuries from nerve injuries 100% one question will come in anatomy 100% one or two questions from nerve injuries will come now listen to whatever i'm telling you keenly okay now in this look at the different parts over here this particular one is called as your bicipital groove you know this is called as your greater tubercle this is called as your lesser tubercle abhi if i zoom here can you see this particular black color line here this particular black color line is called as anatomical neck not surgical neck it is what it is anatomical neck next down here you have got another neck over here this is called as your surgical neck okay now what is the important point that is asked in the exam ye surgical neck ke paas near this surgical neck what are the three most important neurovascular structures we have got anyone guys come on three most important neurovascular structures what do we have over here one is your very good one is your axillary nerve axillary nerve uske baad aayega anterior circumflex humeral artery anterior circumflex humeral artery or posterior circumflex humeral artery three things are going to be there axillary nerve anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery okay anterior and sir, posterior circumflex 
humeral artery very 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 important okay now if you come down a little bit if you come down a little bit yahan pe aapko here you can see, you guys can see there is a condyle like this ye dekho can you look at a condyle over here this condyle this particular condyle is called as medial epicondyle aur ye lateral side mein jo hai this is called lateral epicondyle ओके okay? अभी यहां पे पालपेट करके देखो विच इज मोर प्रोट्यूडेड मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल मतलब कौन सा फ्रैक्चर्स मोर कॉमन होगा मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर्स आर मोर कॉमन कंपेयर टू द लैटरल एपिकॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर्स बट मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल के पीछे बैक ऑफ दिस व्हाट इज दिस स्ट्रक्चर दैट इज पासिंग बिहाइंड दिस मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल गाइस व्हाट इज दिस अल्नार नर्व दिस इज योर अल्नार नर्व दैट इज पासिंग बिहाइंड द मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्लियर विद दिस For example, if I get medial epicondyle fracture, then what will I have? I will have damage to ulnar nerve, which would lead to what? Which would lead to which deformity? Ulnar claw. Ulnar claw. Most of the students, you know, I have watched them putting in the previous classes. Claw hand. ये गलत है. Claw hand नहीं. Ulnar claw. Ulnar nerve damage हुआ. सिर्फ ulnar claw. Ulnar nerve, median nerve, both of them are damaged. Then you call it as a claw hand. वी विल टॉक अबाउट इट इन मिनट नाउ अभी ये देखो अबाउ दिस मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल एंड लेटरल एपिकॉन्डाइल यहां पर यह रीजन जो है ना विच एम हाईलाइटिंग विद एलो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज सुप्रा कॉन्डाइल आर रीजन ये रीजन का नाम क्या है वॉट इज दिस रीजन कॉल्ड एज कम ऑन गाइज बी एक्टिव जस्ट गिव यूर वन आर टू मी टूडे दिस इज यूर सुप्रा कॉन्डाइल आर रीजन सुप्रा कॉन्डाइल आर रीजन ये सुप्रा कॉन्डाइल रीजन में यू कैन सी टू लाइंस दैट आर पासिंग पता क्या है एक है मीडियन नर्व अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज ब्रेकियल आर्टरी व्हाट आर दीज टू स्ट्रक्चर्स दिस इज कॉल्ड एज मीडियन नर्व एंड दिस वन ओवर हियर इज कॉल्ड एज योर ब्रेकियल आर्टरी ब्रेकियल आर्टरी ऑल ऑफ यू गाइज यू आर आंसरिंग राइट यू आर आंसरिंग परफेक्टली राइट बिफोर इट सेल्फ आर राइट यू आर आंसरिंग इट आई एम वेरी वेरी हैप्पी so median nerve and brachial artery now can i tell you like this that agar patient ko supracondylar fracture hua right which artery is ruptured if i ask you what will you tell brachial artery right which nerve is uh, palsied or which nerve is cut down that is your median nerve damage to which nerve median nerve damage to which artery rupture to which artery that is brachial artery okay so this can be a potential 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 mcq अभी ये जो हमने बात की ऑल दिस थिंग्स वट एवर वी टॉक दिस इज फ्रॉम द फ्रंट दिस इज ऑन द एंटीरियर वीव इफ यू गो ऑन टू द बैक इफ यू लुक ऑन टू द पोस्टीरियर वीव पोस्टीरियरली पोस्टीरियरली यू हैव गॉट ए स्पेशल ग्रूव ओवर हियर दिस इज कॉल्ड एज स्पायरल ग्रू ओके वॉट इज दिस स्पायरल ग्रू वाई आर यू कॉलिंग इट एज रेडियल ग्रू क्योंकि यहां से रेडियल नो पास होगा ऐसे फ्रॉम हियर रेडियल नो इज पास now for example if this is my humerus right exactly if i make a fracture in the center of the humerus center of the humerus matlab kya mid shaft fracture very good mid shaft fracture then which nerve is injured which nerve is injured radial nerve is injured radial nerve is injured <coughs> sorry guys um i'm little bit sick right so which nerve is injured over here radial nerve is injured so all of you once again all of you just to brush up these things we have enough time don't worry to brush up these things surgical neck fracture hua to kaun sa nerve damage hoga axillary nerve which artery anterior and posterior circumflex humeral artery ho gaya next medial epicondyle fracture hua which nerve will be damaged ulnar nerve next supracondylar fracture hua which nerve will be damaged median nerve which artery will be ruptured uh, brachial artery mid shaft fracture of the humerus which nerve will be damaged radial nerve all of you are clear with this till here pdf also i'll provide don't worry about that so yahan pe i have written all the things here just have a look surgical neck fracture then axillary nerve anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery okay radial groove radial groove ke andar kya hai radial nerve hai what kind of fracture mid shaft fracture will cause an injury to radial nerve okay medial epicondyle fracture will lead to what ulnar nerve injury it would lead to what ulnar nerve injury supracondylar fracture will lead to what it would lead to damage to median nerve 
damage to brachial artery. Okay, damage to brachial artery. Guys, one thing you have to in your orthopedics it will be asked and in your pediatrics also it will be asked. In children, supracondylar fractures are more common in children. Supracondylar fractures are more common in children. Okay, they won't ask you in anatomy anyways obviously. They will ask you in other subjects. Now, look at this particular thing. Okay, you know what has happened over here? Just look at this and tell me what has happened over here. Uh, Farhan, uh, whatever are important, I will be teaching you. All those things, whatever you are having a doubt, all those things will be repeated. Don't worry. <coughs> Come on, tell me, what is this? Not Wokeman's contracture. No, no way. This is not Wokeman's contracture, guys. This is not Clumkey's. No. No, this is not Clumkey's. Marked weakness of finger extensors. Finger extensors. Ek cheez yaad rakho. Posterior compartment is entirely supplied by which nerve? Radial nerve. Radial nerve will function what? Extension. Extension essay. Now in this patient, patient is having a drop of all fingers. Ye dekho, ye fingers hai. He can't extend these fingers. There is a drop of all fingers. Finger drop is called what? Posterior interosseous nerve. Posterior interosseous nerve, posterior interosseous nerve, finger drop, finger drop. Guys, ek cheez yaad rakho, they directly don't give you such picture and tell me what is this, hai na? Because this picture will depict many other things, right? Ye dekho, dekhne mein kaise hai? Like Wokeman's contracture, like claw hand, some of you are telling it is a claw hand, you are not wrong. By looking at this picture, the same thing, but they will give you a detailed case. Case padne ke baad ye picture deko, then you will understand that it is finger drop posterior interosseous nerve. Okay. Right. Now all of you look at these MCQs over here. These questions over here. Very good Balu. Very good. Now you see, you see there is some kind of tension. There is some kind of contraction over here in this patient. Pata hai pe kya hua? A lot of fibroblasts, they start depositing over here. So that is why this disease is called fibroproliferative disorder of palmar fascia. Yeah, palmar fascia hai na? So most commonly it involves what? It involves fourth and fifth finger. Ye yaad rakho, ye important hai. Mostly it involves which fingers? It involves your fourth and fifth finger. Okay. This condition, very good. Very good, uh, uh, Dabin. Very good. This condition is called as dupuytren's dupuytren's contracture. Isko bolte hai, Dupuytren's contracture. Very, very important. Now, now, a new MCQ can be asked. New MCQ can be asked. That is, what is the severe form of Dupuytren's contracture? Agar Dupuytren's contracture ka ye jo condition hai, if it becomes more severe, how will you see in a patient? In that patient, you would see these, these structures over here. You see these nodules over here? These nodes over here? These swollen nodes? These swollen nodes over here are called as Gerard nodes. What are Gerard nodes? They show you the signs of aggravated disease. Yaha clear hai guys. I think these images might be new to you right now because whatever you have watched, these are little bit different, right? But these are the complete actual images which I have put here so that MCQ should not miss from any image based question. That was my intention. So, Dupuytren's contracture, uska severe form kya hai? Gerard nodes. Ye yaad raho ke? Dupuytren's contracture ka severe form, what is that? That is your Gerard nodes. Okay. Now, tell me what is this particular deformity here called as? Anyone? What is this particular deformity over here is called as? Very good. <coughs> ye dekho. This is the proximal part or ye wala jo tendon hai, this is the distal tendon. Okay, so what has happened in the patient? There is a rupture of proximal tendon. Ye dekho. There is a rupture of proximal tendon. When there is a rupture of proximal tendon, what will happen? The biceps is pulled forward. Yahan pe rupture hua, then the biceps is completely pulled forward like this. Okay, it is completely pulled forward. So this looks like this, right? So that is the reason why this is called as Popoise deformity. Okay, this is called as Popoise deformity. 
Papoise deformity. This particular thing over here is called as Papoise deformity. So, if they ask you what is Papoise deformity, right? Will you tell that the patient is having distal biceps tendon rupture or proximal biceps tendon rupture? Ye yaad rakho guys, proximal, P for, P for papoy, P for kya? P for papoy, P for proximal tendon rupture. Proximal tendon rupture, okay? Don't forget this guys, I'm telling you personally, don't forget this please, okay? Right. Now, they will also give you an image like this and asks you what are the different anatomical parts which you can see in a CXR, right? So, in this chest x-ray, first important thing, you will tell me what is this? Jaldi batao. Very, very easy. Very good. This is your clavicle. Ye clavicle. Let us start from the simple parts. Uh, let us say this is <coughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Batao, che number. What is this? 6. This is called as mid shaft humerus mid shaft of the humerus okay what is point number five abhi ye batao ge tum five is surgical neck or anatomical neck tell me is five surgical neck or anatomical neck very good very good this is your surgical neck surgical neck of your humerus okay and what is four over here Four is not anatomical neck. Ye head of the humerus. Hai. This is head of the humerus. Very good, guys. Very good. Abhi, dikkat aayega yaha pe. Ye dekho. Two and three. Whatever there is a problem, that is the thing they are going to ask you. So, what is two? What is three? Anything which is circular. C. Letter C is also circular. Anything which is circular. Letter C is circular. That is called as corocoid. Now, three. You look at three. All of you just concentrate on three. Isn't it circular like this? Jo bhi circular hai, what is that called as? Coracoid process. Coracoid process. What is number two? Coracoid ke alawa kya hoga? What will be other than coracoid? Acromion process. Acromion process. Acromion process. Right? Guys, tell me if they give such x-ray in the exam, will you answer it yes or no? Jaldi batao. Will you answer it yes or no? Very good. Let us look at this particular thing over here. Let us look at this particular thing over here. What is this? What is this? See. Injury to the upper trunk of brachial plexus. Injury to the upper trunk of upper trunk injury ek hoga, lower trunk injury ek hoga. Agar upper trunk injury hua, that is C5, C6. Agar lower trunk injury hua, that is C8, T1. Okay. Upper trunk injury will lead to what? It would lead to a condition. This condition you call it as herbs palsy. Everyone is perfect with this, right? Herbs palsy. Or it is also called as waiter's tip deformity. <clears throat> waiter's tip deformity. It is also called as policeman tip deformity. Policeman tip deformity. Okay. Anything they can give you. Okay? Anything they can ask you. Waiter's tip, policeman tip, jo bhi pooch sakte. Now, whenever you look here, the first question that should come into your mind, and this is very important in OBGY. Most common birth injury during delivery. What is that? Herbs palsy. Very, very important question. Most common birth injury during delivery kya hai? Herbs palsy. Okay. Guys, now whatever I'm telling you, if they give you a question from herbs palsy, this is what they will give you. They will give you a picture and they will ask you which muscle is weak here. Okay. Abhi ye jo box mein bata na, this is very, very important. Pay full attention. Pay full attention. So, just look in the picture, just look in the picture, what is the position of the arm? First of all, let us talk about the wrist. Wrist flexed condition mein hai ki extended condition mein hai. Yabhe dekho? Look at the child here, wrist, wrist is in flexed condition or it is in extended condition. Wrist is in flexed condition. Why? Because extensors jo hai, they are not working. Okay? Next, look at the arm. Arm is away from the body or adapted to the body. It is adapted to the body. It is adapted to the body. Why? Because abductors are not working. Okay. And third important thing, 
third important thing look at the hand they are pronated i mean internally rotated or externally rotated as a internally rotated hai kyun kyunki external rotators are not working okay so look at the table here why there is flexion of wrist kyunki extensors are weak why there is adduction of arm kyunki abductors are weak why there is internally rotated kyunki external rotators are weak okay abhi abductors kya hai they are going to ask you this deltoid and supraspinatus okay deltoid and supraspinatus kaise yaad rakhna hai das said right das said now all of you look here <coughs> external rotators why because the hand is internally rotated so that external rotators are not working what are external rotators s stands for supraspinatus i stands for infraspinatus clear so this is these are the two important examples which you have to remember for your exam kyunki ye bahut bahut crucial examples hai clear all of you so overall overall they will give you that picture and ask you a simple question which muscles are weak okay there are three b muscles b b b what are b b b biceps brachii brachialis brachioradialis these are the three muscles that are weak guys all of you will you remember this table yes or no sir conceptually yaad rakhna hai wo din gaya beta now there is nothing conceptual here obviously everything is conceptual you can very clearly see it here even if you don't understand conceptually don't go for the concepts in this four days ye jaise hai waise rat lo okay i am openly telling you just practice it the same way now this picture which you can see over here is what is called as your clumkis palsy now clumkis palsy kya ho gaya upper अपर ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सिस इंजुरी और लोअर ट्रंक इंजुरी इट इज लोअर ट्रंक इंजुरी इंजुरी टू द लोअर ट्रंक ऑफ द ब्रेकियल प्लेक्सिस दैट इज सी एट एंड टी वन ओके नाउ इन दिस पेशेंट विल हैव ए टोटल क्लॉ हैंड ओके इन दिस पेशेंट विल हैव ए टोटल क्लॉ हैंड क्यों क्योंकि अल्नार नर्व डैमेज होगा प्लस मीडियन नर्व डैमेज होगा बोथ ऑफ दम गाइस एक चीज याद रखो This part is your ulnar part. Yes or no? This part is your ulnar part. This part is your medial part. अगर ulnar part damage हुआ, then patient will have this. इसको बोलते हैं ulnar claw. Okay? अगर median nerve damage हुआ, then patient will have this. This is called median claw. अभी दोनों damage हुआ. This is called as what? Claw hand. So from now onwards, whenever I speak about claw hand, don't just tell ulnar nerve. It is also median nerve. Okay? so that is happening where in case of clumkis palsy q or a why what is the reason wahan pe to delivery you are pulling the arm of the uh, baby right but here why for example you are falling away from the tree you caught one uh, branch let us say there is hyper abduction like this this is called hyper abduction of the arm now within this within this c8 to t1 t1 ka jo white ramus hota hai na keep this thing in mind most of the students they do a mistake here they just tell you that damage to the t1 will lead to horner syndrome galat no damage to damage I, i will tell you rao uh, i will tell you about what is pope's hand what is benedict's everything i will tell you in the further slides here okay damage to t1 is not horner syndrome ki change your thinking damage to the white ramus of t1 this is a direct statement that is given in the standard textbooks okay white ramus of t1 agar damage hua then it is called horner syndrome don't just mark it as damage to t1 okay so whenever there is horner syndrome you know already there is meiosis right there is ptosis meiosis and facial anhydrosis matlab sweating nahi hoga ek side pe there is no sweating on one side so there is meiosis so there is partial ptosis there is facial anhydrosis i don't want to go in detailed with opta here or medicine here right so you know these things right uh, rao that's what i told you i'll come about that um, discuss about that later on so look at this picture look at this picture first of all actually ye picture ye hai this is the picture actually what i have done is that ye dekho i have removed this part ye jo muscle dekh rahe ho na yahan pe whatever muscle you are able to see over here this particular muscle is pectoralis major muscle what is this muscle 
pectoralis major muscle. I have cut down the pectoralis major and opened. When I have opened it, you see a muscle here. Can all of you look at a muscle over here? Isko bolta hai kya? Pectoralis minor. Okay. This is called P minor. This is a very, very important uh, uh, image based question that will be asked. Now, all of you know, all of you know that you have got uh, serratus anterior, long thoracic nerve. Ye, ye to, all of you know that, right? Where are your serratus anterior muscles located, guys? Just you can locate them. See, here you have got your serratus anterior muscles, right? Let us just zoom into this. Can you see a muscle over here? Ye dekho one, ye dekho two, ye dekho three, ye dekho four. Can you see these muscles? These muscles are called as serratus anterior muscle. What are these? Serratus anterior. Now, if you look very clearly, on the surface of serratus anterior, a chota sa white color thread pass over na. All of you look at this. Can you see a small white color uh, thread that is passing all the way? Right? Abhi ye long hai. Isi liye isko kya bolte hai? Long thoracic nerve. Very, very important. Guys, ek cheez yaad rakho. Examiner know that you know long thoracic nerve injury will lead to winging of scapula. So, they won't ask you. What they will ask you is that they will give you such image, cadaveric image aur yahan pe point out karenge and they will ask you what happens when this nerve is damaged. Now, you know what is this nerve now. This is called as your long thoracic nerve supplying your serratus anterior which would lead to winging of scapula. Clear everyone? Everyone is claro? <coughs> Clear? Right. Now there are two important types of winging of scapula. One is called as medial winging of scapula. Other one is called as lateral winging of scapula. A image ko, how do you identify it? Ye dekho, what did I tell you? Is this called as sprengel deformity? Nahi, kyu? Kyuki the patient has kept his hands forward. So it is not sprengel deformity. Look at the scapula. Scapula is completely protruded to other side. Yes or no? Isi liye isko bolte medial swinging of scapula. Okay? Lateral swinging of scapula. You have seen the lines which have drawn over here. Ye dekho, this is the midline. This is the midline. Agar yaha pe scapula hai, this is medial winging. If the scapula is going away, this is called lateral winging of scapula. Okay? But abhi tak, aaj tak na, this lateral winging of scapula, they haven't asked you image based, okay? They will be asked in, uh, uh, you, they will be asked as the direct questions only. So don't worry about that. You just need to know that lateral winging of scapula is dorsal scapula nerve. Medial winging of scapula is what? What is this? Long thoracic nerve. You are clear everyone? Right? Medial winging of scapula is your long thoracic nerve. Lateral winging of scapula is your dorsal scapula nerve. So keep this thing in mind. This may say only one picture you need to remember. That is winging. If the hands are forward, scapula is protruding, winging. Okay? Now here, they will ask you to identify where is pectoralis major, where is pectoralis minor. Ye dekho, ye muzzle jo dikh na, this is pectoralis major. Ye cut karke open karne ke baad, after opening this, this small muzzle is called pectoralis minor. Okay? I think it is very easy for you to identify right now. Now, let us identify some muzzles, guys. Kyuki, we cannot take a risk. Okay? I am not telling you definitely you will get a question. But every year, at least one question is asked from the muzzles of upper limb and few muzzles of lower limb. Let us not take a risk and let us just uh, write down the muscles. Abhi, this muscle which you can see here, which is in the form of a trapezium, ye kaun sa muscle hai guys? What is this muscle? This muscle is called as your trapezius muscle. What is this? Trapezius muscle. Next, this muscle which you can see over here, ye dekho, this particular muscle. Right? What is this muscle? Very good. Lats. What is lats? Latissimus dorsi. Latissimus dorsi muscle is lats. Okay. Latissimus dorsi muscle is your lats. Okay. Abhi coming to the next important thing. What I will do is that. Ye dekho, what I will do is that. One side jo trapezius hai na. Ye dekho, one side jo trapezius hai na. I am removing this trapezius. Trapezius ko remove karne ke baad. These are the three important muscles I will find over here. What are these three important muscles? 
ये देखो वन मजल इज कॉल्ड ओवर हियर एज लेवेटर स्कैपुले लेवेटर स्कैपले ये देखो ये वाला जो छोटा मजल है ना दिस इज कॉल्ड एज लेवेटर स्कैपले लेवेटर स्कैपले के नीचे देर आर टू मजल्स ये देखो दिस मजल इज रोमबॉइड शेप्ड और नीचे वाला मजल भी ऑल्सो रोमबॉइड शेप्ड बट वन रोमबॉइड इज स्मॉल वन रोमबॉइड इज लार्ज सो रोमबॉइड माइनर रोमबॉइड माइनर ओके एंड वन इज रोमबॉइड मेजर वन इज रोमबॉइड माइनर एंड रोमबॉइड मेजर क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू रोमबॉइड माइनर एंड रोमबॉइड मेजर सो लेवेटर कैपले रोमबॉइड माइनर रोमबॉइड मेजर सो आई आई दिस ईयर आई एम थिंकिंग दैट क्वेश्चन कैन कम फ्रॉम दिस ओके बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी क्रुशियल पॉइंट टू आस्क यू द डिफरेंस बिटवीन मोस्ट ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स दे कंफ्यूज बिटवीन लेवेटर कैपले एंड रोमबॉइड माइनर क्योंकि दोनों देखने में दे आर स्मॉल राइट सो बेटर कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन दिस ओके यू बेटर कॉन्सेंट्रेट ऑन दिस राइट Look at the next muscles here, which are located on the scapula. Above the spine of the scapula is supra. Below the spine of the scapula is infra. Very easy. So here, above the spine of the scapula is your supra spinatus. Supra spinatus muscle. Below the spine of the scapula is infra spinatus muscle. Infra spinatus muscle. now now comes the important part over here just beneath the infraspinatus in beneath the infraspinatus you can see a small muscle here i'm putting dots you see you see this small muscle over here this muscle is called as teres major muscle okay what is this muscle this is called as your teres major very good rowdy dr rowdy very good anand very good <coughs> Teres major. Now, when I tell teres major, there should be teres minor. Here, look. This is called as your teres minor muscle. Teres minor. So once again, look at the difference. Look at teres major. Teres major is hiding inside. If you go little bit down, this is teres minor. Okay, sir. Where is teres major here? Here, look. All of you look here. See this particular muscle over here is teres major. Just above that, you have got teres minor. Teres major and teres minor. Everyone is clear, right? Coming to these muscles, guys, right? Now all of you just remember the basic point that all the muscles starting from the medial epicondyle are flexors. So whatever I am writing down, the name will start from flexor only. All the muscles uh, attached to the lateral epicondyle are extensors. So whenever such image comes to you, don't be in a hurry. See where is the muscle starting. Muscle is start. I'm giving you small hints now. The muscle is starting from medial epicondyle, or muscle is starting from the lateral epicondyle. If muscle is starting from the medial epicondyle, then this is a flexor muscle. Okay. The name of this particular muscle is pronator teres. Pronator teres. Pronator teres. What is the function? Pronation. What is the function? Pronation. Okay. Look at the next muscle. Now in this muscle, now you will tell me what is this muscle. from where does it is where is it starting it is starting from the medial epicondyle so this muscle is a flexor muscle so this muscle is a flexor muscle and this muscle is going towards the carpal bones on to the radial side here radial side and this is ulnar side it is going on to the radial side so you have to write it as flexor carpi radialis radialis okay For example, if it is going on to the opposite side, what will you write? Flexor carpi ulnaris. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay, right. Flexor carpi ulnaris. Now look at this picture. You will tell me the answer. Where is it starting? Here they go. Medial epicondyle. Right. So this should be called as a flexor muscle. Okay. And this time it is going towards radius side or ulnar side. Ulnar side. So I have to call this as flexor. carpi ulnaris so one is called as your flexor carpi radialis and the other one is called as your flexor carpi ulnaris so these two muscles can be asked either of them can be asked keep in mind okay don't confuse see where is the origin point see where it is going that is that's it. that is the only thing now look at this muscle this muscle is also starting from the medial epicondyle so it is a flexor muscle 
right? But look here, this muzzle is going all the way till the wrist region and here what will happen is that this muzzle will divide into tendons. This muzzle will divide into long tendons like this, okay? It is dividing into what? Long tendons. So, what do you call this? Anyone? What do you call this? It is dividing into tendons in the palm. So, you have to call it as palmaris and tendons are short or long? Long. So, palmaris longus. Guys, palmaris longus. Uh, moon pole, uh, it is not digitorum. I will tell you what is digitorum, okay? Just remember it is palmaris longus. Guys, there are two ways you can study the images. One is, look at the image 100 times and then remember it. But if they give you a third different image, right, with a slightly change in the structure, it will be difficult. Second way is knowing the tricks like this, little bit tricks, okay. So that is why just pay attention to the tricks over here. Coming to this particular muzzle over here, what is this muzzle? See, this muzzle started, where did this muzzle start? This muzzle started in the brachium, this is brachium, this is anti-brachium. It started in the brachium. And this muzzle is going towards the radial bone. All of you look here. This muzzle is going towards the radial bone. So, brachium se nikla, radius the From brachium to radius, what is that? Brachioradialis. Brachioradialis muzzle. Brachioradialis. Clear all of you? If, if they give you such picture, will you identify yes or no? Brachioradialis. Now coming to the important part that is flexor digitorum profundus, flexor digitorum superficialis. What is this flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis? Guys, just remember a small hint which I am giving you, okay? What is profundus? What is superficialis? Superficialis matlab superficial. What is profundus? Deep, right? Now when you started studying a textbook, now you decided you have to study like a profundus. Profundus matlab you will study very deep. Very deep matlab not in a single chapter. You will cover up all the chapters till the end of the page you will go. What is superficial is superficial is in the sense start studying the first preface page or let us say first 50 pages. Now look at this. This muzzle, the tendons of this muzzle are four and where are these tendons attaching? These tendons are attaching to the distal fillings. Here they go. Attaching to the distal fillings. So anyone which is going very deep till the end, that should be called as profundus or superficialis. Very good. Flexa digitorum profundus. It is attached to the distal fillings. It is attached to what? Distal fillings. Very, very good. Okay. Then what do you mean by superficialis? If flexa digitorum profundus is attached here, here, Superficialis will be attached back of that. Yes or no? Because it is superficial. Here they go. Look at this again. Where are they attached? Where are the tendons attached? To the middle fellings. Where are they attached? To the middle fellings. Okay. So this is called as flexa digitorum superficialis. Where they attach to the middle fellings. Everyone is clear with these two important things, two important differences over here. Everyone is clear with these two important differences over here, guys. FDP and FDS, are all of you clear? Give me a yes, then I will have a go. Very good. Very good, uh, <coughs> Shubeksh, Shubeksh Sharma, very good. Now let us go on to the next important muzzle over here. Now you will tell me what is this muzzle? What is the rule I told you? What is the rule I told you? The rule I told you is that any muzzle originating from the medial side, here they go. This muzzle is originating from the medial side. So this muzzle should be called as flexor muzzle. Flexor muzzle. And where is this muzzle going? This muzzle is supplying, this muzzle is supplying to your thumb. Right? This muzzle is inserting to your thumb. Right? So thumb in Latin you call it as polysis. Thumb in Latin you call it as polysis and look at the length of the tendon. Tendon is very long. So you call it as longus. You call it as longus. Flexor polysis longus. Flexor polysis longus. Everyone is clear with this guys. Flexor polysis longus. 
सो फॉर वॉट एवर मजल्स वी हैव डिस्कस रैंडमली ऐसे कुछ डिस्कस नहीं किया राइट रैंडमली वी डिड नॉट डिस्कस एनी थिंग वी डिस्कस्ड विद अ प्रॉपर कॉन्सेप्ट वी डिस्कस्ड विद अ प्रॉपर हिंट्स ओके नाउ कम्स द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग नाउ कम्स द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट इज यूनिपिनेट मजल्स बाय पिनेट मजल्स ओके सो यू सी हियर दिस इज वन मजल नंबर वन ओके दीज मजल्स ओवर हियर आर कॉल्ड एज योर लंब्रिकेल्स lumbricals okay how many lumbricals do you have how many lumbricals do you have lumbricale number 1 lumbricale number 2 lumbricale number 3 lumbricale number 4 four lumbricals out of which one and two lumbricals are unipinnate three and four lumbricals are bipinnate bas ye yaad rakho just remember this okay one and two are unipinnate three and four are bipinnate clear okay Now comes the another important part that is anatomical snuff box. Within this anatomical snuff box, you can see two important tendons. One tendon is on the top. One tendon is on the bottom. Right. So here, top one tendon is there. Down one tendon is there. Tendon which is on the top is called as external pollicis longus. Anyone who is top, he is always long. Your brother is longer. Right. Now anyone who is short is always brevis. Anyone who is down is always brevis. Right. So longus is long, sh brevis is short. Extensor pollicis is longus, extensor pollicis is brevis. Now the question is that extensor pollicis is longus forms the which border? It forms your medial boundary. Extensor pollicis is longus forms the medial boundary of anatomical snuff box. Whereas extensor pollicis is brevis, it forms what? Lateral boundary. lateral boundary okay lateral boundary everyone is clear everyone is clear guys simple thing brevis means what short right brevis is, means what short anything which is short you don't consider it hai na gande cheeze mat sochna anything which is short basically you don't consider it what do you will tell chalo come on later right later matlab kya lateral remember this way Short is brevis. Brevis is later or lateral. Okay, later or lateral. Now, someone already asked me, "What sir, benedict sign? What is it? Ape tongue deformity? What is it? This is the thing. Median nerve injury will lead to these three important signs. First of all, why median nerve injury happens? It will happen because of supra condylar fracture. You remember that supra condylar fracture. Okay, uh, anik radial artery. Okay, not now. Radial artery, <coughs> <coughs> supra condylar nerve. Okay. Now you tell the patient to flex his hands like this, but because of the nerve injury, he will have one finger extended in this way. This is called as what? Pointing finger deformity. Pointing finger deformity. and this particular position is called as ape thumb deformity guys you have to understand i cannot go behind the concepts few pointing finger hai and all these things i have already discussed especially in series lecture series of anatomy in this youtube channel itself you can watch it later on after the exam abhi nahi theek hai what is this one here this is called as sign of benediction sign of benediction bas remember this remember these three things okay guys you know who is the major in your family who is a major in your family your father is a major in your family right father ko hindi mein kya bolte ho what do you call father in hindi as bap right what does b stand for benedict sign b stands for what benedict sign a stands for what ape thumb deformity p stands for what pointing finger deformity everyone is clear yes or no right very good look at these two important pictures over here what are these two important pictures over here are that see <coughs> in this what did i tell you this part is entirely okay this part is entirely innervated by your ulnar nerve this part entirely is innervated by your ulnar nerve this part is by median nerve If ulnar nerve is damaged, there will be this particular sign which is seen in the first picture. फिर से workman's contracture नहीं. चार दिन बचा exam के लिए. This is called as ulnar claw. Very good. Now don't tell claw hand. Ulnar claw. ये देखो. 
look at the other picture here also there is a claw so total claw is there so there are two types of claw hands ye dekho this is called as partial claw hand or you can call it as ulnar claw ulnar claw why because here you have got ulnar nerve injury ulnar nerve injury very 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 good why complete claw because ulnar nerve plus median nerve is injured so you call it as complete claw ye differences guys most of you don't know i know that most of you don't know so please keep this thing in mind you know the major things right things which are very difficult but things which are very easy we basically uh, ignore them but remember these things everyone is clear now tell me wrist drop where do you see wrist drop which nerve injury you will see wrist drop very 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 good radial nerve injury radial nerve palsy will lead to wrist drop radial nerve palsy will lead to wrist drop very good guys very good shreyas gupta very good bhavnesh para mohit ruhela very good amnesia perfect amnesia very good guys now how many ways radial nerve can be injured ek hai if you if you cause any fracture to the mid shaft of the Uh, humerus okay mid shaft fracture to the humerus will lead to radial nerve injury i have already spoke about that there are two other ways what are these two other ways this is called as saturday night palsy in saturday night palsy which nerve is injured again the radial nerve radial nerve is injured okay now which nerve is injured here look at look don't look at her face exam char din mein hai okay don't look at her face now look at what she is holding she is holding crutches what is she holding she is holding crutches so what is happening <coughs> what is happening the crutch is compressing this region axillary region so here what will happen again this is called as crutch crutch palsy this is called as crutch palsy okay crutch palsy even in crutch palsy also which nerve will be injured again you come across your radial nerve again you come across your radial nerve radial nerve. everyone is clear guys perfectly clear crutch palsy radial nerve here also saturday night palsy radial nerve right ye after exam after exam not now okay bhavnesh we will discuss about honeymoon palsy बहुत जल्दी है लोगों को यहां पे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दैट ये देखो दिस इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ व्हाट दिस इज अ पिक्चर ऑफ हनी मून पैलसी अभी हनी मून पैलसी व्हाट हैपेंस इन हनी मून आई एम नॉट आस्किंग यू बट व्हाट हैपेंस इन हनी मून पैलसी इज व्हाट यू हैव टू नो ओके पीपल आर लाफिंग पुराने दिन याद आ रहे होंगे फॉरेन वाले दिन राइट right? चार दिन में एग्जाम है बेटा ठीक है भूल जाओ वो सब रशियन विशन सब भूल जाओ अभी now right now you have to focus here so honeymoon palsy what is honeymoon palsy is that when when she sleeps on your head uh, sorry on your arm on your arm what will happen the radial nerve here will be compressed so that would lead to what radial nerve palsy so honeymoon palsy is also that crutch crutch palsy saturday night palsy and wrist drop all these four important signs everyone is clear very good right <coughs> I'm sorry. Carpal tunnel syndrome, CTL syndrome, carpal tunnel syndrome. There are two types of tests you do, and a test. So, what are the two types of tests? What is this test? Tell me. You are flexing your wrist at ninety degrees. In this, what are you doing? You are flexing your wrist at ninety degrees. When you are flexing your wrist at ninety degrees, this test is called as Felon test, felon test. Okay, felon flex, felon flex. And what is this test over here? You are hyperextending your wrist and you are tapping the region here. यहाँ पे median नो pass होगा ना? You are tapping this region over here. That is why tap T for tap, T for tunnel, T for tap, T for tunnel. This is called as tunnel test. One is called as felon test. Fe for felon, fe for flex. this is tunnel test clear all of you 
Now comes to the most important thing that is your axillary artery branches. Okay. Now, the most important thing, I'm not telling you how to remember axillary artery branches, right? That is that will be taught in the rapid revision. What I'll tell you is how to identify the axillary artery branches over here. Now, any artery that is encircling any artery exactly follow the way I'm teaching you. Any artery that is encircling your surgical neck, I already told you. What is this artery? Anterior posterior circumflex humeral artery. Clear? So this is anterior circumflex humeral artery. Anterior circumflex humeral artery. Sir, why you did not write posterior? Posterior will be on the back. This is on the front. Okay. Next, look at this particular branch. This particular branch is subse upper and a branch. Exactly follow the way I'm teaching you guys. This branch is on the top of everything. So, superior thoracic artery. Superior thoracic artery. Okay. Next, look at this particular branch over here. This is called as thoraco acromial artery. Thoraco acromial artery. Okay. Thoraco acromial artery. Just beneath the thoraco acromial artery, you have got lateral thoracic artery. Lateral thoracic artery. After that, the next artery you have got is a subscapular artery, guys. Uh, I am by myself itself. I am admitting to you that you don't have any mnemonics to remember all these things over. You just have to look at the picture again and again. Okay. Abhi ye batao, what is this muzzle over here? Anyone? I have already discussed in a cadaveric image. What is this muzzle here? You, you tell me the answer. Before that, I'll write down the next artery. This artery over here is your posterior circumflex humeral artery. Very good, Shreyas. Uh, Shreyas, very good. Moon pole, very good. This muscle over here is pectoralis minor muscle, not major, okay? Pectoralis minor muscle. minor muscle life is always painful for a painful for everyone okay life is painful for everyone and that's how you enjoy it hello let us come to the dermatomes dermatomes may bus yehi yaad rakho, right so you have dermatomes starting all the way here from c5 all the way till t2 okay c5 till t2 and how are the dermatomes they will point out at one dermatome and ask you what is this very easy way to remember is that Dermatomes from C5, they start in a clockwise manner in this way. C5 ke baad C6, C6 ke baad C7, uske baad C8, T1, T2. In the clockwise, right? Like this, clockwise the dermatomes are present. So this is the only hint I can give you. When it comes to lower limbs, lower limbs oppo are opposite, guys. Why am I calling it as over... Why, why am I telling you that lower limbs are opposite in the sense? Lumbar ka pe una, where should the lumbar region lie back? But the dermatomes will lie in the front, right? The sacral dermatomes will lie in the back. Clear all of you? See, anteriorly what do you, what you should have? Anteriorly you should have other dermatomes here. But anteriorly you are having lumbar dermatomes. Lumbar dermatomes in the sense the lumbar region. Okay, I am not changing any anatomy. I am just giving you a trick to remember. So all of you can see over here. A is all the lumbar dermatomes over here, right? In this... The important question that they will ask you is that, what is the important question they will ask you is, T10 is the dermatome for umbilicus. T10 is the dermatome for umbilicus. Okay. T10 is the dermatome for umbilicus. Clear? And scrotal region, what is the dermatome? S3 and S4 are the dermatomes for the genital region. Ye yaad rakho. T10 for uh, umbilicus, S3, S4 for the scrotal region. And which dermatome is present for the knee? Knee is having what? L3 dermatome. Both, both important. Eh? Very, very important. Very, 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 very important. Right? So, L3, L3 is what? L3 is a dermatome for the knee. Okay? Now, next important thing is that where are the sacral dermatomes present? They are present on the posterior side. You see all the sacral dermatomes over here which are present on the posterior side. Right. And next important thing is that don't confuse medial dermatome of the leg is L4. Lateral dermatome of the leg is L5. Where is L4 located? 
L4 is located medially, medially L5 is located laterally. Okay, keep this thing in mind. Keep this thing in mind. Okay, each one can be a MCQ. Right. Coming to the transverse section of the trachea and the esophagus. Okay, if I'm making a transverse section of trachea and esophagus, this is how it looks. Okay, you just you just need to remember these uh, things. Other than that, there is no magic that can happen over here. You see, this part over here is called as esophagus. Just beneath that, you have got is a trachealis muscle. Very good, amnesia. And down here, you have got is a respiratory mucosa. Down you have got a cartilage in the respiratory system that is your hyaline cartilage. This is the only thing I can tell you. Everyone is clear with this? You're all clear? Yes or no, Bacho? Very good. Now, this is one of the very, very important image, guys. Very, 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 very important image. At the level of T4, at the level of T4, what are the structures you need to see? Okay, say how you have to identify the structures. Now, everyone stop commenting. Just look whatever I'm teaching you. You have to identify the structures from the anterior to posterior. First of all, anterior kya hai? Jaha pe sternum hoga. Where there is sternum, that is anterior. Where there is vertebra, that is posterior. All of you can look at the vertebra over here. Yes or no? Right? So, this is called as a posterior side. And this bone over here is the anterior side, that is your breastbone. Clear? Now, second important thing you need to know is that, see, this particular part which you can see over here, this particular part which you can see over here, let me, this particular part which you can see over here is called as descending iota. Very, very important guys. Don't put it as ascending iota. Descending iota hai ye. Okay? Just beneath that, just beneath that, you see this particular part like this, this is called as esophagus, esophagus, esophagus ko, I can also start the letter with O, right, esophagus. Next important thing, esophagus ke saamne kya hoga? There is tracheal bifurcation, there is tracheal bifurcation, bifurcation, okay, and down here you have got ascending iota ascending iota okay so what are the things descending iota esophagus trachea and ascending iota simple way to remember is dota 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 d o t a descending iota esophagus tracheal bifurcation and ascending iota everyone is clear at the level of t4 clear of you now let us look at the level of, let us look at the level of nipples. Ye dekho, all of you just concentrate over here. Are in these nipples over here? Ye dekho, yahan pe bhi nipple hai. So at the level of the nipples, I just want you to know only one thing guys. I want you to identify the heart. Okay. In 2020, they have asked this question. Okay. In December 2020, right. The exam was conducted on December 4th. Right. That time they have asked this question here. They, they, have, they have given this particular part, they highlighted one chamber of the heart and they have asked you, what is this chamber? Okay, just look at this particular chamber over here. All of you know this picture. This one is your right atrium. This picture you have to remember now. Left atrium, this is right ventricle, left ventricle. Okay, now what happened over here? What happened is that... Ye picture jo hai na, same picture, I am just rotating it like this. When I rotate it like this, what is happening over here? Right atrium is down. See, right atrium is down over here. Okay. Next, look here. Left atrium is on the top. Yes or no? Left atrium is on the top. See, your left atrium is on the top. Right? The ventricle with a thick muscle is called as left ventricle. See here, this is called as your left ventricle and the opposite one is your right ventricle. All of you are clear? Now don't put this as right atrium, yeah, left atrium or niche right ventricle, left ventricle. Yeah, galat hai. Okay, this is wrong. Just remember this picture which I have given you. Okay, this will be easy for you to remember. Again, I am telling you, easy for you to remember. Okay, heart. The, remember the heart which I have drawn. Just rotate it. That will be your answer. Coming to this particular exam question over here. Ye kya hai, batao, ye bone hai. What is this bone, by the way? 
दिस इज योर फ्रॉन्टल बोन वॉट इज दिस फ्रॉन्टल बोन हमने इसे बताओ वॉट इज दिस फ्रॉन्टल बोन दिस बोन ओवर हियर इज कॉल्ड एज अ पेराइटल बोन फ्रॉन्टल हो गया पेराइटल हो गया नाउ दिस पर्टिकुलर बोन ओवर हियर इज कॉल्ड एज योर टेम्पोरल बोन and this small bone over here is called as your sphenoid bone okay now if you look carefully if you look carefully all these four bones are meeting at a particular location over here the place where all these four bones are meeting at a particular location is called as terion is called as terion so terion is formed by terion is formed by what frontal bone parietal bone sphenoid bone and squamous part of temporal bone which part squamous part of the temporal bone okay <coughs> <coughs> right look at the next important thing now tell me is this a mandibular foramen or a mental foramen mandibular or mental guys look at this picture see if this is your mandible simple way to remember is that inside if you have a foramen that is mandibular foramen outside if you have a foramen that is mental foramen mental matlab kya pagal right people who are people who are mentally gone right people who are mentally crazy they don't stay in the home they go out you know they make all the nuisance and all so they go out out in the sense what outside outside what is the foramen you have got mental foramen Inside, what is the foramen you have got? Mandibular foramen. Keep this thing in mind. So this is your mental foramen, and this one over here is your mandibular foramen. Mandibular foramen. Within this mandibular foramen, what is the nerve that is passing? Shreyans Gupta, very good. That is your inferior alveolar nerve. Inferior alveolar nerve. देखो इंफीरियर एल्वियोलर नर्व इंफीरियर एल्वियोलर आर्टरी इंफीरियर एल्वियोलर वेन तीनों ओके इंफीरियर एल्वियोलर नर्व आर्टरी एंड वेन ऑल दीज थ्री एवरी वन इज क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यूर क्लियर विद दिस लुक एट दिस दिस इज द लेटरल एक्सरे ऑफ योर नेक है ना लेटरल एक्सरे ऑफ योर नेक अभी इन दिस लेटरल एक्सरे ऑफ योर नेक First of all, you need to identify base of the skull कहाँ पे है. All of you look at this X-ray. ये देखो, this is called as your base of your skull. Exactly beneath the base of the skull, you see the spinous processes are coming out. See, this one is called C1. This is called C2. ये जो है C3. This is called C4. This is called C5. This is called C6. This is called C7. Okay? C seven, clear all of you. So C one, C two, C three, C four, C five, C six, C seven, clear. So these are this is a this is a normal X ray, right? These are the seven uh, cervical process which they will give you. How they will give you is that that you will study in orthopedics. You know you have studied Hangman's fracture, right? All of you have studied that fracture. so if you understand where are the normal then you will understand where is the fracture okay so you just have to find out the point where it is starting jefferson fracture and uh, yeah very good now the the real the real uh, challenging part comes to you what are the branches of external carotid artery if they give you this picture if they give you this picture even even an mbbs second third year student also will tell you but they won't give you that picture they will give you this picture okay what is this this is a digital subtraction angiography so they will give you this picture and they will put a number and ask you what is this okay so very very easy to remember guys very very easy to remember first of all you have to understand what is this for that let me do one small thing right so this is the thing which i wanted to draw and show it to you telling you that this is how the arteries are placed this is how the arteries are placed now how do you name these arteries ye bahut bahut important hai 
All of you look here guys. Very very easy. Just look at the location and you name it. All of you be with me. Now this is artery number 9. Artery number 9 is going like this all the way. Yes or no? Artery number 9 is passing like this. What is present here? Maxilla. What is present here? Maxilla. So what is artery number 9 should be called as? Maxillary artery. Clear? Artery number 9 should be called as what? Maxillary artery. See, artery number 9 is called as maxillary artery. Clear all of you? I am giving you a trick to remember. Just remember the way I am telling you. Axilla artery number 9 is called as axillary artery. Okay? Any artery, yaan se agar artery is going back to the occipital region, you call it as occipital artery. Now tell me, which artery is going back? Out of 5, 6 and 7, which artery is purely going back like this? Artery number 5. Na? So, artery number 5 is occipital artery. Two arteries are clear. Ho gaya. Two arteries you understood right now. Two arteries are clear. Yes or no? Right. Next important artery. Next important artery is one artery is going like this to the temporal region. Ye dekho. Which artery is going to the temporal region? Artery number 8 is going up to the temporal region. So, I have to call this artery as superficial temporal artery. So, three arteries are clear for you right now. Just by looking at this DSA, you will tell the three arteries here. Everyone is clear? Guys, tell me, is this trick, whatever I am telling you, is it clear for you? Are you understanding? <coughs> All of you are understanding, right? I hope I am not teaching to myself. Right. Right. Now, let us look at this particular artery, guys. Ye dekho. Look at artery number 3. Look at artery number 3. Just follow whatever I am telling you. Artery number 3 is coming all the way like this. Coming all the way. It is going like this. It is going down. Right. Ye dekho. Artery number 3 is going up, going up, going up, going up, going up like this. So, it means this artery number 3 is supplying to your face. Basically. Right. So, can I call this artery number 3 as facial artery? Artery number 3 is facial artery. Artery number 3 is what? Facial artery. Okay. Artery number 3 is facial artery. Right. Very good. Abhi, baki arteries, you just have to remember it, guys. Baki arteries, there is no other way that you can do over here. But one small hint I can give you. Another, another hint I can give you here. If I am drawing an ear here. This is the ear which I am drawing. Okay. Just behind the ear, there is an artery. If you see... Just behind the ear, there is an artery. What is that artery? Here they go. You see this particular artery that is present behind the ear? Very good. This artery which is present behind the ear is called posterior auricular artery. So in this way, guys, I'm just rubbing it right now. Uh, I, my intention is not to teach you all these arteries. My intention is to tell you how you have to study such picture. Okay. So... So, we are, we are done with which artery over here? Posterior auricular artery. Baki arteries B, they are the same way that uh, follow like this. Right? So, just remember like this, flop mass. Flop mass, F stands for facial artery, L stands for lingual, occipital, posterior auricular, maxillary, ascending pharyngeal, superior, superficial, temporal and super, superior thyroid artery. So, these are the arteries of what? External carotid artery. These are the branches of what? External carotid artery. So, exactly follow the same way and study. Clear all of you? So, this is how it gets easy for you. Now, if they give you such picture and ask you a very simple question, internal carotid artery, where is it? External carotid artery, where is it? Anything which is going inside the brain is internal carotid artery. Now, tell me, out of this A, out of this A and B, which is going inside the brain? See, this is the artery that is passing inside the brain. So, that is your internal carotid artery. Other than that, that will be your external carotid artery. External carotid artery. Clear all of you? Right. Now, let us discuss the same arteries on such picture. If they give such type of picture, how you have to identify? This is very easy. The first one is your superficial temporal artery. 
superficial temporal artery because it is supplying the temporal region. Back here, which is supplying is called as occipital artery. Occipital artery. Next, behind the ear. See, if I'm drawing an ear over here, ear over here, behind the ear, you have got your posterior. Very good, guys. Posterior auricular artery. By this, I can uh, just expect that most of the students who are right now here within this live, definitely you gonna uh, pass the exam. Because I have known that right? intentionally I kept some difficult questions. But still, I was watching whether you will answer or no and you guys are answering. If you are answering, it means in the exam, less difficulty questions will come. You need not to worry at all. Okay. Next artery over here is your maxillary artery. Because it is supplying your maxillary region. This artery over here is called as your ascending pharyngeal artery. Okay, ascending pharyngeal artery. The next artery over here, you see, this is called as your external carotid artery and this is your internal carotid artery. And down here, you just have to remember these guys, this is called as superior thyroid artery. Superior thyroid artery. Okay, the next artery here, it will be lingual artery. And here, obviously, which is supplying the face is facial artery. Okay, so why did I teach you fastly? Because this is just a memory part which you have to remember. It's no concept. Hai. Right? So, just remember as it is. Okay, do thin bar dek lo. Enough. Now, this is a picture that is nowadays asked. Okay, first I will show you this picture. Later on, I will show you a scan of the sagittal section scan over here. Then I will teach you the picture. This is a very, very important, guys. Radiology, maybe this is very, very important question. Okay. So, let us start from the easy one. This particular thing over here is called as your cella tarsica. Cella tarsica is belonging to which bones? Phenoid bone. Within the cella tarsica, what is, what is lodging inside your pituitary gland? And what is this sinus over here? Sphenoid sinus. This is your sphenoid sinus. Okay. Now, what is the palate over here? This is called as your soft palate. What is this palate? This is called as your soft palate. Okay. Next, what is this structure over here? Tell me what is this structure 1 and 2? Batao, what is this structure 1 and 2? You will answer me very fast. Be fast, be fast. Very good, very good. No, 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 no. Yeh soft palate thodi hai. 1 kya hota hai? What is 1? 1 is your epiglottis, guys. Epiglottis. Epiglottis and two very good Mohit, Chubeksh, Chubeksh, Bhavnesh, everyone right? Two is your genoglosis, genoglosis muscle. Okay. Now let us look at this particular scan. First of all, let us identify this scan over here. I am rubbing away all the arrows over here. Pehle identify karo is scan ko. This is a sagittal section. When you cut it down like this, take a picture. This is a sagittal section. In this sagittal section, this particular part which is on the back over here is called as your corpus callosum. This is called as your corpus callosum. Okay. You know corpus callosum, right? This is called as your corpus callosum. Next, corpus callosum ke niche, this particular part over here is called as thalamus. This is called as what? This is called as your thalamus. Next important thing is... <coughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Next important thing is that, next important thing is, this particular part which you can see over here is called as your midbrain. Midbrain. Very good. Midbrain. Midbrain ke niche kya hoga? Pons hoga. Then what is this particular part over here called as? This is your pons. Okay. Pons ke niche kya hoga? What will be below the pons? Midbrain, pons, medulla oblongata. So, this part over here is called as your medulla. Okay, this is called as your medulla oblongata. Behind what do you have? What is this part over here? This is called as your cerebellum. Cerebellum. Between the cerebellum and between the brainstem. Brainstem matlab kya? Midbrain, pons, medulla is called brainstem. In between that, you have got a triangular shaped structure like this, right? So, I am putting a dot only here. This particular structure over here is called as your fourth ventricle. Fourth ventricle. Very good, guys. You guys are really, really awesome. I'm telling you, perfect. Fourth ventricle. Okay. Be like this only. Don't forget these things. Okay. 
Moving on to the next important thing. First, I will show you this image. I will teach you the things here. Uske baad, you will answer me the real image. Okay. In this, what are the things you should remember? You should remember everything? No. What you should remember? What you should remember here is that first you should remember that anything which is hanging is called fornix. Okay. Yeah, they go. This particular structure is called as your fornix. Let us come about discuss about the nuclei. See here, guys, this particular nuclei which you can see over here, right, on either sides, this one over here is called as your thalamus. Sanjeev Kumar, what made you to send 100 rupees to me? It is out of love. Thank you so much. I will have very good tea today. <laughs> right. <laughs> Let me take a screenshot. Thank you so much. Hello. This is called as your thalamus. Okay. Next important thing is, above the thalamus, you see a small area of grey matter over here, right? So, this small piece of grey matter, jo hai, this is called as your caudate nucleus. This is called as your caudate nucleus, okay? Chai ka paise aage, yaar. Thank you so much. I don't usually carry cash with me. Thank you so much. So, this is caudate nucleus, okay? Caudate nucleus ke niche kya hai? Thalamus. Behind the caudate nucleus and thalamus, behind, ye dekho, behind in the sense you can see this part over here, right? This particular part, what is this particular part called as lentiform nucleus? These three things you remember, I'm telling you, question won't miss at all. Remember these three things, caudate nucleus, thalamus, lentiform nucleus, bus, or kuch bhi nahi, okay? Let us go back to this particular image over here. Now, in this image, you tell me what is number one? What is number one over here? What is this? Very good, very good. This is called as your thalamus. Mene kya bola? Thalamus ke upar what will be there? Caudate nucleus. So number two here is called as your caudate nucleus. Caudate nucleus, thalamus. Dono ke piche, behind both of them. You will have lentiform nucleus. This is called as lentiform nucleus. Clear all of you? Next important thing, you see uh, two cavities. See here you see two cavities. Back you see two cavities. Two cavities in the front are called as anterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Back is posterior. So posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. Now compare the same thing here. Where is your anterior horn of the lateral ventricle? See, this one over here is called as your anterior horn of lateral ventricle okay this one over here is called as a posterior okay i have already written it here right posterior horn of lateral ventricle lateral ventricle okay <coughs> amnesia uh, insula insula right you have got a lateral sulcus there right you call it as a sylvian fissure that is here this one that is located here but anyways that anyways so far for the image based questions you need not to go that deep for fmge okay right look at this particular part over here tell me what is this part who will tell me now anything which is hanging is called anything which is hanging is called what Come on guys, we are almost done with the images. Anything which is hanging is called? Very good. Perfect. Perfect. Anything which is hanging is called fornix. Fornix. So this is your fornix. Guys, if you remember these things, this is more than enough. Abhi ye dono na, just, uh, I've, I've just mentioned it. Okay? Outside kya hai, what is the color? Gray hai na, so I am calling it as gray matter. Okay? Then inside what is there? White matter. That's it. These are the only thing. They won't ask you this thing. Okay? They won't ask you this thing. No need to remember. But guys, please, 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 please. Caudate nucleus, lentiform, thalamus, yaad rakho, please. Okay? Remember this fornix also. Clear all of you? Now let us enter into another favorite topic of yours. That is circle of villages. Abhi, aise agar picture hai, right? If the picture is like this, everyone will answer. So they won't give you. They will give you such picture. Compare the right things, structures which are located on the right and let us put the same structures on the left over here. Okay. Let us do it right now. Right. First important thing. Uh, 
ऑन द राइट साइड आई हैव गॉट मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी सो हियर यहां पे मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी कहां पे है ये देखो दिस इज मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी यहां पे भी मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी एवरीवन इज क्लियर क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी मिडिल सेरिब्रल आर्टरी नाउ उसके बाद लेट अस सी बेसिलर आर्टरी ये देखो यहां पे बेसिलर आर्टरी है सेम बेसिलर आर्टरी वेयर इज दिस ये देखो यहां पे दिस इज द बेसिलर आर्टरी बेसिलर आर्टरी ओके Now, from the two basilar arteries, you see an artery that is coming here. ये क्या है? Posterior cerebral artery. Just look at this. Look at this. All of you look at this. This is posterior cerebral artery. This is your posterior cerebral artery. Just compare this. It will be easy, guys. Just compare this. This will be easy. Okay? Posterior cerebral artery. Posterior cerebral artery. ओके अमनेशिया दिस पिक्चर इज अ कंबाइंड पिक्चर राइट एंड एम सी ए इज प्रेजेंट ओवर हियर इट सेल्फ ओके सी दिस इज अमनेशिया दिस इज एम सी ए इफ यू रिमेंबर इफ यू रिमेंबर गाइज इन मेडिसिन पार्ट यू हैव स्टडीड आई थिंक दिस इज मिडिल सर्बल आर्टरी डिवाइडिंग इंटू टू सेगमेंट्स ओके एक इज सुपीरियर डिविजन अनदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज यूर इन्फीरियर डिविजन ओके सो सुपीरियर डिविजन एंड इन्फीरियर डिविजन टूगेदर यू कॉल इट एज एम टू एम टू and this one is called as m1 see this one is called here as m1 m1 this is m2 this is m2 okay again i'm telling don't go that details don't go that details just uh, pay attention to the things which i'm teaching you all the arteries will be covered over here okay so right next important artery over here what is the next important artery yeah all of you look at posterior communicating artery ye dekho where is the posterior communicating artery over here See this particular thing is your posterior communicating artery. See here also, this is posterior communicating artery. Next, where is your anterior cerebral artery? See, this is your anterior cerebral artery onto the right. Look onto the left. Where is your anterior cerebral artery? See, this is your anterior cerebral artery. Okay, anterior cerebral artery. Now, now you might get a doubt. Where is internal carotid artery? Yeah, they go. This is your internal carotid artery. internal carotid this is not that clearly seen but here you can very clearly see internal carotid artery okay i'm just rubbing it just look here this is your internal carotid artery everyone is clear right so so far whatever arteries we can only see only them we will mark right if arteries we cannot see we cannot mark but for example what i'm trying to tell you is anterior communicating artery hai you know see the artery that is located here anterior communicating artery let us see where is this artery present see this is anterior communi uh, sorry anterior cerebral artery here you have got anterior cerebral artery between both the arteries you see a small artery over here you see this right which is horizontal that is your anterior communicating artery right for example such pictures won't be asked such things won't be asked they will mainly ask you the major things which are very clearly visible right not the controversial parts everyone guys tell me is this part easy for all of you everyone is this part easy yes or no yes yes amnesia it is a branch of internal carotid artery everyone <coughs> very good now let us go to the less easier part less easier part this is the part over here okay now guys i don't want to write the arteries over here i don't want to write the arteries and waste the time i know you guys have practiced this a multiple number of times even if you did not practice this will be like a test for you when i will send the pdf yahan pe answers hai answers are here answers are here and do this and again i'm telling you whenever you want to prepare any kind of x rays any kind of ct scans and anything always follow a website called radiopedia okay that is the best one right and all of you know this particular mcq very aneurysms very aneurysms are most common kahan pe where the anterior cerebral artery and anterior communicating artery meet ye anterior cerebral artery right the pencil is anterior communicating artery ye dekho is point pe yahan pe very aneurysms are very 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 common another easy x ray that they are going to give you is the pelvic x ray abhi now you will tell me what are the things which is looking like a head is called as the head of the femur head of the femur okay now concentrate on this concentrate on this 
Here you can see two important trochanters. Ye dekho, ek bada sa trochanter, ek chota sa trochanter. Hai, okay? This is called as greater trochanter. This is called as greater trochanter. And this is called as LT, which is lesser trochanter. Greater trochanter and lesser trochanter. Abhi, both the pelvic bones are joining together with the help of what? With the help of a joint. What is a joint called as? Pubic symphysis. Pubic symphysis. Tell me what is this opening here called as? Very good. This is called as your obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. Obturator foramen. Okay. These are the things which you need to know. Guys, uh, one small hint I am giving you. Actually, I should not teach you this thing in anatomy. This will be taught in orthopedics, but here there is already x-ray, so I am discussing it. Just pay concentration over here. You see, uh, exactly here, exactly here, if I am drawing a curve, dekho, if I am drawing a curve along, if I am drawing a curve along this particular line over here, dekho, from the uh, lower surface of the femur, essay, if I am drawing the line, from the inferior surface of the rami like this okay if i'm drawing the line can you see a very perfect arch like this very perfect arch you can see yes or no here also you can see a very perfect arch you know if you see a perfect arch that is a normal x-ray if they give right very good very good uh, subeksh this is called shenton's arch what is this arch called as shenton's arch Agar, if they give pelvic x-ray with a fracture Simple thing you need to do is that just draw a line like this. If the line is not in the form of an arch or if the line is like this or deviated in this way, then there is a fracture. Ye cheez yaad rakho. If you could not find a arch like this, if you could not form an arch, that is a fracture. Okay? So that is the reason why I am removing one arch so that you can figure it out when I send you the PDF. Everyone is clear? Yes or no? Now comes the most important part. This is the part. Sir, carpal bones ke baare mein don't they ask that Jamana is gone? Now they are not asking about carpal bones. Even if they ask, I won't teach you because you already know all the carpal bones. Okay? Right. So, all of you look here. This particular bone which is C-shaped, C-shaped bone over here is called as calcaneus. C-shaped bone is called calcaneus. Next, a bone which is in the form of a T. T shape. Ye to T to nahi lag rahi hai. All of you just look at this. All of you just look at this. Isn't it looking like a T? Isn't it looking like a T? Right? So, ye T shaped bone jo hai. This is called as talus. This is called talus. Talus ke saamne jo hai. That is called navicular bone. Navicular bone. Sir, how will you identify navicular bone? What is navigator? He is a navigator. Matlab, he is the one who is taking all of us right to a particular location. So, if he is a navigator, he should be in the front. That is why navicular bone is in the front. Navicular bone is in the front. Everyone is clear? Guys, ye cheez yaad rakho. Boat shaped, ye boat shaped, ship shaped, ye cheez, these things, they are not asking now. They are not asking now or else I would have told you. Okay. So, the paper is little bit of higher standard. Hai difficult aega. They are not using those terms now. Okay. So, navicular bone. After navicular bone, if you look here, three important bones are there. One, two, three. What are these one, two, three? One is medial cuneiform. Because medial side is intermediate cuneiform, lateral cuneiform. Okay. Medial, intermediate and lateral cuneiform. Okay. Clear? All of you are clear, right? Right. <clears throat> next bone over here is cuboid bone. What is the bone next? Cuboid bone. Right. The reason why I am discussing on this bone too much is just to make you to remember how to identify these bones in the exam. I just can't write it like this scribble it something. Okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. If these, if these bones are asked, if these bones are asked as it is, you will answer. Everyone will answer. 
but only few will answer when an x-ray is put like this okay when an x-ray is put like this you have to answer now the same thing same same things this is a navicular bone kyunki ye samne hai in front of the navicular bone i told you 1 2 3 ye dekho in front of the navicular bone 1 2 3 are there all these are three are cuneiforms after 1 2 3 side to that you have got cuboid ye dekho cuboid hai here also you have got cuboid clear all of you very good now the same leg if i am showing it you see you are looking from the dorsal aspect if i am rotating the leg like this if you are looking from lateral side or medial side this is of the picture looks actually this is the picture from the medial side medial side what is that the same thing calcaneus uske upar talus talus is top t for top t for talus in front of that you have got navicular in front of that you have got medial cuneiform राइट जस्ट टेक फ्यू मिनट्स ऑफ योर टाइम एंड जस्ट कंपेयर पहला वाला और ये ये दोनों कंपेयर करके जस्ट फिगर इट आउट यू विल वेरी इजीली अंडरस्टैंड नाउ कमिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट साइड दिस इज अ क्वेश्चन दैट इज आस्ड इन ऑर्थो आल्सो व्हाट इज दिस फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस से आई एम स्टैंडिंग ऑन राइट लेग व्हेन आई एम स्टैंडिंग ऑन राइट लेग इफ माय लेफ्ट साइड ऑफ द हिप इज फॉलोइंग डाउन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज पॉजिटिव ट्रेंडल एंड बर्ग साइन पॉजिटिव ट्रेंडल एंड बर्ग साइन इज सीन वेन देर इज अ ड्रॉप ऑन द ऑपोजिट साइड ये देखो ड्रॉप ऑन द ऑपोजिट साइड मोस्ट ऑफ यू विल पुट एन ऑप्शन पैरालिसिस ऑफ विच मजल्स ऑल ऑफ यू आर टेलिंग पैरालिसिस ऑफ ग्लूटियस मीडियस ओके ऑल ऑफ यू आर टेलिंग पैरालिसिस ऑफ ग्लूटियस मिनिमस बट नो वन इज टेलिंग पैरालिसिस ऑफ टेंसार फेशिया लाटा ऑल्सो टेंसार फेशिया लाटा tensor fascia lata is also included within this okay gluteus medius minimus ke sath tensor fascia lata is also included sir which now nerve, nerve paralysis will cause this that is superior gluteal nerve injury sir what is the root value of that root value is l4 to s1 okay thank you so much medpix thank you so much love you <coughs> right i think this this part this thing has been uh, a new thing which has added on the first new thing which i have taught you is the clavicular fracture if you know very perfect and this is the second important new thing and few new things also we have added there difference between the winging of scapula as well as the sprengel deformity ab ye batao uh, this important thing common peroneal nerve all of you know you know common peroneal nerve common peroneal nerve is divided into two nerves one is superficial one is deep okay so superficial will supply your peroneus longus peroneus brevis okay now for example if superficial is damaged what will happen there is no eversion of foot there is no eversion of foot see if this is my foot what is eversion i am lifting my foot like this this is eversion of foot okay if this is my foot if i am lifting it like this this is eversion of foot no eversion of foot it is because of superficial common peroneal nerve injury and if there is a deep injury to the com deep uh, peroneal nerve injury that would lead to foot drop wahan pe pata options kya honge first option will be superficial peroneal nerve second option will be deep peroneal nerve third option will be common peroneal nerve don't put as a common peroneal nerve when a perfect answer is given don't put as a common peroneal nerve the answer is deep peroneal nerve which muscle is paralyzed tibialis anterior and what kind of gate do you see stepage gate stepage gate is the gate okay everyone is clear stepage gate is the one which you see right i'll just show you a video guys of the gate over here all of you just look at this video look how she is walking look at a right leg everyone everyone look at her right leg you see that that step whatever she is doing like this right so that is called as stepage gate okay that gate is called as your stepage gate so keep that thing in mind stepage gate okay everyone is clear right now how to identify these muscles very very easy very very easy ek cheez yaad rakho 
How to identify these vessels? Very, very easy. Remember one thing. Upper limb is opposite of lower limb. What do you mean? Yahan pe jo flexors hai, all these are flexors. In the lower limb, they are all extensors. Okay? Backside here, we have got extensors. In the lower limb, backside, we have got flexors. Upper limb ka jo actions hai, they are opposite of lower limbs. Okay? Now, ye jo muscles dikh rahe na, in the anterior compartment. Now, what are these muscles should be called as? You should call them as flexors or extensors. Extensors. Because they are opposite, I told you. Now, how to identify this? Very, very easy. Just follow the trick here. Now, this muzzle, see, the first muzzle, first muzzle is coming down all the way. Forget about this. This muzzle is coming down all the way. If you see, you see, this tendon is attached to your toe. This tendon is attached to your toe. First, I will write here as this is an extensor muscle. Extensor muscle. Okay. Extensor muscle. Extensor muscle. Second important thing is that it is attached to your toe. Toe is called what? Hollex. Thumb is called what? Pollex. Toe is called what? Hollex. Hollus is longus. Why are you calling it as longus? Ye dekho tendon dekho yaan se lekar yaan tak hai. Very long tendon. I think it will be very easy if they ask you this muscle. Yes or no? Now tell me the other things. What are the other muscles here? Other muscles here, see, all these group of muscles here also, they are called as extensor. But these tendons are attached to the digits. So extensor, digitorum. And these tendons are also long. So you call them as longus. You call them as longus. Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, Bhuvana, common or deep peroneal nerve. Bhuvana, here I told you, this is deep peroneal nerve, okay? Deep peroneal nerve will cause your foot drop, okay? Right, so this is the important thing. Next, another muscle that is present exactly in front of tibia, jo tibia ke saamne hai, any muscle in front of the tibia is called as tibialis muscle, okay? That is tibialis anterior muscle, tibialis anterior muscle. Everyone is clear? TBL is anterior. Everyone is clear? Very good. Let us go to the last parts of our lecture right now. Few images are left. Now what are these arteries? Just follow the trick which I am giving you. See this bone over here is your tibia. Anything in front of the tibia is anterior tibial artery. Anything back of the tibia is posterior tibial artery. That's it. Anything in front of the tibia is anterior tibial artery. Back of the tibia is your posterior <coughs> <coughs> sorry posterior tibial artery. Done. Very good. Anterior tibial artery continuation is dorsal pedal artery where you can feel the pulse of this particular artery. Posterior tibial artery continuation is plantar artery. Why plantar artery? Because it is going down to the plantar region. So plantar artery. Just by looking at the location, you should be able to answer. Clear? Now let us discuss the most important topic on celiac trunk. Okay? What are the arteries which are located within this celiac trunk? Okay? Here they This is your celiac trunk. This is your celiac trunk. By the way, celiac trunk is at the level of which vertebra? Everyone guys, celiac trunk jo hai, celiac trunk is at the level of which vertebra? T12. T12. Superior mesenteric artery is at the level of which vertebra? L1. Inferior mesenteric artery is at the level of which vertebra? L3. Ye three important questions are very, very, very important. Right. Now, within this uh, arteries over here, Within this arteries over here, uh, these are many arteries. Just uh, stop commenting. Just look at whatever I'm teaching. It would be easy for you. Okay? Basic plan, one artery to the liver, hepatic artery. One artery to the spleen, splenic artery. One artery to the stomach, gastric artery. Khatam. Right? Now, see here, one artery which is directly arising from the this one. So you see this artery? This artery is directly arising from the celiac trunk. It is making a wave and going to the spleen. So this artery, I will call it now as what? What should I call it as? 
दिस आर्टरी इज कॉल्ड एज स्प्लीनिक आर्टरी स्प्लीनिक आर्टरी एवरी वन इज क्लियर स्प्लीनिक आर्टरी स्प्लीनिक आर्टरी इज गिविंग टू ब्रांचेस This is called SGA. SGA stands for short gastric artery. I cannot write the abbreviations now. Short gastric artery. LGOA, left gastro-omental artery, or left gastro-epiploic artery. Left gastro-omental artery or epiploic artery. It is a branch of what? Splenic artery. हो गया. Done. Now the celiac trunk gives one more branch that supplies to the lesser curvature of the stomach. This is called as left gastric artery. What is this artery called as? This artery is called as left gastric artery. Okay, left gastric artery. Okay, regarding the stomach, liver, and all these things are done. Now coming on to the other side here, from the celiac artery, you have got an artery here. This artery here is called common hepatic artery. Okay, it is dividing into two. one is called as hepatic artery proper hepatic artery proper this artery is called as gastro duodenal artery why are you calling it as gastro duodenal artery because it is present between duodenum and the stomach that is why gastro duodenal artery okay now hepatic artery proper will further divide into two more branches left hepatic artery right hepatic artery right hepatic artery se niklega cystic artery from the right hepatic artery you will have a cystic artery this is all this is all you have to remember guys theek hai bas ye cheeze yaad rakho bahut kafi hai okay so i know it might be difficult for you but ek bar fir se ye recording agar aap log ne sun liya if you have record if you have listen to this recording once again it would be easy okay so uh, sir you have left one more artery actually what is this artery is left gastro omental artery will anastomose with what right gastro omental artery that is the only thing okay that is the only thing and next important thing is you see this artery over here what is this artery this is called as superior pancreato duodenal artery duodenal artery superior pancreato duodenal artery so both of them are the branches of gastro duodenal artery see the same things i have written here same things i have written here if you want the full forms you can watch this picture over here isme you will understand all the full forms over here clear just compare the picture which i have drawn and look at this particular picture which i have downloaded from the internet and you can compare it and then it will be easy for you <laughs> next important part and next easy part what is the next important and the easy part here is that tell me what are these structures <coughs> this is guys this is a transverse section through the abdomen this is a transverse section through the abdomen at the level of the diaphragm okay first of all yahan pe anterior kya hai posterior kya hai wherever vertebra are there wherever i see a vertebra this is a posterior side opposite will be the anterior side clear all of you tell me what is this organ i don't know what is this organ what is this ye liver hai na liver ek spleen hai liver liver right this particular one is called as spleen this is called as spleen and this particular guy over here is called as your stomach this one is your stomach this is your stomach okay this is your stomach next important thing next important thing is that one very important thing you are missing here ye dekho this particular thing is called as your right kidney right kidney very good bhavnesh this is called as left kid right and left kidney after that we have got some vessels what are these vessels this particular vessel which you can see over here this particular vessel which you can see over here this is called as descending aorta descending aorta okay and this particular vessel over here is this one right this one over here is called inferior vena cava what is this inferior vena cava okay now comes the most important part you have to remember what is that see attach to the stomach here you see this part all of you look here can you figure out this particular part over here these are the small parts which they will ask you in the exam this is your lesser omentum what is this lesser omentum 
right lesser momentum on one side it is attached to this structure over here can you see this particular structure over here is called porta hepatis porta hepatis i i porta hepatis i know you know the structures that are located within the porta hepatis yes or no jaldi batao don't tell me you don't know क्या होगा हेपेटिक आर्टरी पोर्टल वेन वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेरी गुड नाउ लुक एट दिस पर्टिकुलर पार्ट ओवर हियर सी यू सी ए स्मॉल स्नेक लाइक गैप यू सी ए स्मॉल स्नेक लाइक गैप ओवर हियर ये देखो गाइस दीज आर द नॉट टर्मिनोलॉजीज दैट आर यूज्ड इन द टेक्स्ट बुक स्नेक लाइक गैप एंड ऑल एग्जाम से पहले याद रखना है कैसे भी रटना है ना दैट इज द रीजन वाई आई एम टेलिंग यू दिस थिंग्स so a snake like gap which you can see over here this is called as omental bursa omental bursa right the lesser sac over here right so all of you are clear with this all of you are clear now now we are done we are almost uh, uh, 46 just four more slides are present guys right now i want you to share this video to your friends kyunki kyunki This neural tube defects में अभी जो बता रहा हूं ना न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट हंड्रेड परसेंट वन क्वेश्चन विल कम फ्रॉम न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट डेफिनेटली इफ यू वॉन्ट यूर फ्रेंड्स ऑल्सो टू गेट द मार्क्स विच यू बेसिकली डोंट वॉन्ट राइट ये कॉम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम नहीं है ठीक है बेच दो उन लोगों को लिंक सो रीड दिस पार्ट दिस इज वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट ओके सो ऑल ऑफ यू लुक के नाउ ये जो है दिस इज द न्यूरल ट्यूब बेसिकली इट शुड बी क्लोज there are two important openings one is called anterior neuropore listen very carefully listen listen very carefully now don't comment down anterior neuropore will close by day 25 will close by day 25 posterior neuropore will close by day 28 normally normally agar close nahi hua then anterior neuropore it will cause i mean there will be no proper development of the brain that will lead to anencephaly agar brain develop nahi hua this is how it the baby looks absence of the brain parts of the brain right and then cephaly if posterior neuropore is not closed by day 28 that would lead to spina bifida spina bifida as me most important spina bifida ek hai rachis caesis ye na recently in fmg exam they have asked you rachis caesis very very important in recent fmg exam they have asked you sir i should prevent all this neural tube defects if you want to prevent then give 400 micrograms of folic acid per day right from your medicine point of view you have studied folic acid vitamin b9 right if you are not giving it properly that would lead to neural tube defects apart from that that would also lead to what that would also i should not discuss that subject right now but few pages are left i'm discussing it it would also lead to what megaloblastic anemia you remember that vitamin b12 and vitamin b9 megaloblastic anemia hypersegmented neutrophils all these things will be there chalo it's not uh, important right now so if they give such picture and ask which time i mean on which day the neuropore should have closed and that is day 25 <coughs> okay <coughs> day 25 so let us discuss about posterior parts i mean posterior neuropore what are the different types of spina bifida you have got one is called spina bifida occulta one is called spina bifida with meningocele one is spina bifida with meningomyelocele another one is rachis caesis meningocele matlab kya sirf meninges rahega wahan pe only meninges will be there meningomyelocele meninges and spinal cord also will be there meningomyelocele you will understand in a minute what i am talking about rachis caesis this is rachis caesis In this rachis caesis, क्या होगा? All of you know, this is a vertebra with a spine. All of you know this vertebra with a spine. So ये जो आर आर्च है ना, this is called dorsal arch. In these patients, what will happen? This dorsal arch is open because it is not developed. Then what will happen? The spinal cord here will go out. You see, this is the thing here. So here the patient is having what? Open vertebrae. Vertebrae are open. Spinal cord is open. and there is leakage of csf that is what is called as rachis caesis clear all of you 
नेक्स्ट वॉट इज स्पाइना बाइफिडा अकल्टा इज लंबो सैक्रल रीजन पे इफ यू सी ए टफ्ट ऑफ हेयर इन द लंबो सैक्रल रीजन दैट इज कॉल्ड एज स्पाइना बाइफिडा अकल्टा ओके नाउ लुक एट दिस पिक्चर in this picture what i was trying to tell you this is a normal picture this is a normal picture now here now here look here you see this green color layer coming out along with that inside a blue color dots jo hai wo csfa okay keep that thing in mind see this is what this is your meninges this is your meninges and this is your csf meninges and this is your csf okay bas 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 emoji 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 bas Stop the emojis now. Listen, listen, listen to the class. So these are the meninges, and this is the CSF. So here, tell me now. Only meninges has come out, or spinal cord also came out? Only meninges has come out. If only meninges has come out, I will tell it as spina bifida with meningocele. Okay? Just look here. What has happened here? Meninges has come out. Meninges has come out. Here spinal cord also has come out. Done. Uh, Med picks. Five more minutes left. Don't worry. I'll leave you before two. Well, don't worry. That's my promise. Okay. Meninges has come out and spinal cord also has come out. You should call it as spina bifida with meningo milo seal. Okay. Now tell me, do you think you will expect these uh, pictures in the exam? No. Then what picture they will give you in the exam? This is a picture they will give you in the exam. okay this is the picture they will give you in the exam very easy to identify on the cyst whatever cyst whatever swelling that is present whatever protrusion that has happened if the surface is shiny if the surface is shiny then it is what it is meningocele here dekho all of you look here is in the surface shiny it is meningocele kabhi kabhi kya ho sakta hai with with the help of that csf because of that excess pressure the 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 cyst can rupture you see this is the ruptured cyst okay don't don't uh, remember this thing don't remember this thing don't remember this thing i only sing the songs in the washroom in the bathrooms right i don't sing online <coughs> i don't want to lower all your uh, confidence which you have before your exam okay so so look here when it will rupture this is the thing Now all of you just look at this. यहाँ पे भी swelling है, but do you see any kind of shininess, any kind of shining on the cyst? No shining. Why? Because there is spinal cord also here. That is why you call it as spina bifida with milo meningocele. Guys, just uh, observe these two pictures. ये देखो shining surface है, no shining surface, right? Guys, will you will you do it in the exam? अगर question पूछा गया तो will you uh, write it? Will you put it as a right answer? Jaldi batao, fata fat. Yes or no? Very good. Cranial nerve foramen is a very very important topic. Isiliya I did not include in this PDF because jo important hai you might have studied. Yes or no? Even if you did not study, you have to study now before you go to sleep. Okay, that is the only thing. Internet dekhlo, internet pe na there are very good pictures of uh, cranial nerve foramen. Ratlo jo bhi karlo. but remember that before you go to sleep cranial nerve foramina is must before you go to exam also that is must so these are the image based questions now out of all these images how many can you guarantee i don't know but definitely will there any questions come definitely 100% few questions will be repeated from this okay that's the surety i can give you second important thing is that i have already told you in the starting right four days are left for your exam what you should do in this four days should you revise all the 19 subjects should you revise the things which you have uh, the, the small uh, sticky notes whatever you have stuck it to the wall and all should you revise or no what i am telling you is that these four days concentrate concentrate on previous years question papers previous five years question papers previous five years every year two exams so previous five years 10 exams okay 10 papers concentrate on those 10 papers four days only one thing concentrate on previous five year question papers okay why am i telling you is that definitely i am telling you 10 plus questions will pakka come from these things 
अभी डायरेक्ट पूछ सकते हैं दे कैन आस्क यू द सेम क्वेश्चन लिटिल बिट विद डिफरेंट स्टाइल और एज इट इज एन इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आई डोंट नो बट टेन प्लस क्वेश्चन विल डेफिनेटली कम फ्रॉम प्रीवियस फाइव इयर्स क्वेश्चन पेपर्स ओके बी परफेक्ट बी परफेक्ट विथ ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स क्लियर ऑल ऑफ यू सो डोंट डू ग्रैंड टेस्ट नाउ क्योंकि इफ यू आर डूइंग ग्रैंड टेस्ट रिमेंबर यू आर डूइंग ओनली वन पेपर ओके so if you are revising again i'm telling you still you won't have confidence so the final word i've given you revise all the five years question papers that's all i can tell you right now these four days okay definitely <coughs> definitely you can clear it okay so don't lose the confidence ye mat sochna next attempt dunga nahi take it now finish it now and go enjoy go for a vacation enjoy kar lo jo karna hai karo aur radel no palsy bola tha na do that honeymoon palsy whatever things you want you do finish it now that take out that headache right now okay that's the only thing i'm telling you so this is all uh, the important things i want to tell you here guys so guys tell me you love the session yes or no for my satisfaction you love the session everyone is it worthy everyone all the 75 members all the 81 members <laughs> right guys so <coughs> thank you so much thank you so much and remember all the time all the time i have told you previously and now also i'm telling you my 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 uh, prayers are always with you right exam se ek din pehle i'll definitely go to the temple and i'll pray for all of you guys okay so definitely you will ace the exam thank you so much for being till now right patiently uh, goodbye take care and love you all क्या नहीं करता पॉप छिलेगा